Hi, this is Nick, and welcome to Geek Out With. I am here with my co-host, Lacey. Hi, everyone. And of course, this is a Temple of Geek podcast, and we're very excited today because we have uh, a special guest to geek out with, and that special guest is Mark Thompson. Mark, hi. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> so among many things, uh, you, you know, you've got a lot of credentials as far as a voice actor and a narrator, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Pokemon, you've done, you've done so many things. Um, could you give us just a quick list of some of your highlights of, of your career, I guess? Uh, it started with, I was on a cartoon called Daria that was on MTV. And I was like the football player, all right, babe. And he was uh, Mr. DiMartino, Daria, Daria Morgendorfer. And I did uh, Mr. O'Neill, Clash, let's all say hi to Daria. Uh, and then I did a bunch of stuff on Pokemon. Uh, I do Gibbon and Gengar and uh, up like probably close to 50 or 60 different creatures and things like that. Um, and then I was on Yu-Gi-Oh! And I did like Duke Devlin and Chaz and a bunch of other people. I did Astral and um, a bunch of people on that show. And then I got to do uh, a tons of stuff at 4Kids Entertainment. And then I, I do a bunch of the Star Wars audiobooks. I think I just recently counted that I'm up to like 80 of the Star Wars audiobooks. So um, pretty cool. I've been very, very lucky. That 80, that's that's impressive. Uh, and that's yeah. actually, <laughs> that's really where uh, I first really started to get to know uh, you because um, becoming a Star Wars content creator and needing to read all the books, you know, because you have to stay up on that. And audiobooks is, is the best way for me to do that. And plus now they're just, they're so well done and so entertaining. Yeah. Um, how did you become involved uh, to become an audiobook narrator? At one point, my agent called me and said, you know, hey, have you ever done an audiobook? And, you know, honestly, I always feel embarrassed when I have to tell this story. But like, I, I didn't, I wasn't much of a reader. Like I, I was the kid in high school, who, if you had to do a book report, I rented the movie instead of reading the book. So I was trying to talk her out of it. And I was like, eh, no, I've never really done an audiobook. I'm not sure it would be my thing. And She's like, well, it was a Star Wars audiobook, but if you're not interested, and I was like, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. <laughs> like, wait, 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 yes, yes, I would love to do that. Um, so I, I got to audition for that, and um, they basically sent me a few pages of this series of books called The Legacy of the Force, and it was Han, Luke, and Leia and their children, and kind of now enough time had passed in the books up to that point where they're actually adults, and it was kind of the, you know... Um, aftermath of of their kids and what's going on with their kids and it was this really epic nine book story and so uh i auditioned for it and i think i got the part because i could kind of do an approximation of some of the characters that were in the movies um but again like i was not much of a reader so <laughs> like uh the director kevin thompson who does an amazing job on the star wars books really kind of had to hold my hand and coach me through how to narrate, you know, and how to actually, you know, cause I was so focused on the dialogue, but I wasn't paying much attention to the prose and the rest of the, the novel. <laughs> so he had, he really had to help me learn to become a storyteller. And uh, I'm very, very grateful to him for that. So, and now, now I'm like, Oh, I, I see why people like reading. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so I enjoy stories, but like trying to sit down and, and read a book is always, um, uh, like it time consuming and trying and like I'm a slow reader. So like having these audiobooks for me, uh, it really allows me to, you know, uh, continue on these adventures and, and go on that journey and be able to kind of keep up with all of it. Otherwise I'd still be, you know, like a book I was working on three years ago, I'd still be working on that right now. No, I'm, I'm the same way. And uh, they, they really do a great job with them. Uh, Cause they, put all the like music and sound effects and it, it really feels like a radio player, kind of a movie in your mind when it's, when it's all put together. So they're really great. So for, for people that are like that, uh, it's a great way to access those stories. I want to hear about the process of narrating and what recording audiobooks is like for you, Mark. So basically it starts off where I'll get kind of sent the book and I've got a few weeks to kind of read it and kind of get to know what's going on. And basically I'll read through it and then I will cast it. Meaning like anyone that speaks, I take down some notes about, you know, who are they? 
you know, are they humanoid? Are they alien? Are they, you know, what allegiance do they hold? Um, have they appeared in any of the films or any of the cartoons or anything like that? Is there any references I need to try to find to try to, you know, figure out what they've sounded like before? And then any new characters, um, I'm trying to kind of come up with some voices that will fit the characteristics of that character, but also will be very distinct from any other characters that I'm doing in the book so that it can be very clear who's speaking. And so I kind of record samples of that on my phone and then we go into the booth and we start recording. And uh, anytime I need to kind of remind myself of what that character is or what I think it should be, I'll play that little sample. And then if Kevin likes it, it kind of gives me the thumbs up. And if not, we might collaborate and try to come up with something different. Um, and then it's off to the races and you're just read until you bleed and just get it done. <laughs> this has turned you into a reader, uh, maybe not by choice, but now you have to. Um, yeah, it's my teacher's revenge getting back at me for all the books I didn't actually read. <laughs> one of the voices in, in Star Wars that you're most well known for, and it's actually still one of my favorites as well, is Thrawn. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. And how did you capture a character like that? Well, it's kind of interesting because like at, um, at first I had a different idea. It's, he's gone through a couple of evolutions because at first I was playing with the idea that, um, you know, he is an alien and the Empire is kind of xenophobic and, and, and didn't like aliens. So I kind of, you know, at first kind of gave him a voice that made him sound very alien and very different from the Empire. And we actually recorded, um, when we did Air of the Empire, we, we recorded like, I want to say a chapter or two um, before Kevin was like, okay, I was liking this, but the more we get into the story, the more I feel like we need to accentuate the kind of uh, intelligence and the almost Sherlock Holmes nature of Thrawn. And so we, we kind of went back and then kind of, you know, did kind of this very, you know, British intelligent and kind of Sherlock Holmesy kind of, you know, deep baritone thing. Um, and that was kind of how we did Heir to the Empire and, and the kind of the rest of that trilogy and things like that. And then um, uh, Disney acquired Star Wars and uh, Thrawn came back on Rebels and they cast Lars Mikkelsen. And it was, it was similar, but it was, it was slightly different. And it was kind of this like hushed whisper to him. And like, and he has, you know, uh, traces of his natural accent. Uh, you know, I, I believe he's from the Netherlands and, um, so, or Denmark. Um, and, uh, so, uh, I, I, I remember watching the cartoon and thinking, oh, I wonder if they're going to recast or if, or if maybe I might get a chance to still do these books. And so I was watching it with my kids. And I kind of started mimicking along to the show, you know, and he's like, Harry Singula. And, and my son was like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, nothing. Sorry. No, no, everything's fine. And uh, so, but they, they called and said, no, we, we want you to, you know, do the, the, the audiobooks for this as well. And uh, so then we kind of, you know, decided, well, I want to get as close to that as possible because that's going to be the definitive Thrawn now. So, so then we've, I've, I've tried to kind of, you know, do that. And I, and I guess like, I was actually recently listening to clips from the first Thrawn book that we did after Rebels and and some of the there's been like two trilogies since then and he's kind of now morphed there's been some drifting and I think he's kind of morphed to a hybrid between the two of what we did for Heir of the Empire and, and my best approximation of what uh, Lars does so it, there's a lot of interesting evolution that's been going on. Oh that is that's amazing and you know and all the way back for, from Heir to the Empire, because that is, you know, the most famous trilogy in in Star Wars book history. You know, that's that's yeah. like the pinnacle of <laughs> Star Wars novels. You, you mm -hmm. were mentioning before how being a slow reader, you would still be working on that same book. Like the one book that I actually did buy uh, when I was, at, you know, in high school or, or graduating high school was Heir to the Empire. And I was like, you know, because I was so excited. Well, what happens after Return of the Jedi? What's going on? But my slow reader and my bad student uh, got the better of me, and I never finished the book. So it wasn't until I got hired 
that then I went back and was like, oh, this is how the story ends. <laughs> so it knew, it knew, and it yeah. came for you. <laughs> yes. Thrawn is one of my favorite characters and one of my favorite voices. So, um, do you have a favorite Star Wars character voice? Yoda is my all time favorite. And I just, I, I love that character and what that character symbolizes and what he teaches Luke. And, you know, so anytime I get to go, do or do not, there is no try. I'm like, woo. You know, like I get super excited. And so he's he's just my all time favorite Star Wars character. I've been I've been trying to work on voices for so long and y- Yoda being one of them. I'm not going to try it in front of you. But <laughs> <laughs> but I, when I hear a good Yoda voice, because so many people do it poorly, when I hear a good Yoda voice, I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, the, the, the everything is right with the force. Yeah, he's great. My friend uh, Oliver sometimes complains that, you know, like Yoda's just Grover, like Yoda. And I was like, no, he's not. Like, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, Frank Oz is is yeah. you know, just 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 a genius, but no, Yoda, yeah. Yoda and Grover. <laughs> so one of the uh biggest uh book series that that has been out the last few years is the High Republic series. And I've been I've been keeping up with it. Um and it and it's been fantastic. It's the largest undertaking in star wars books history if if i'm not mistaken um and how has that been being at the heart of it i have loved it like i um i know people come to star wars and and every star wars is so big and there's so many reasons why people love star wars and everyone has their own unique reason why they like it like some people and enjoy like the the rebels versus the empire and some people love the aesthetic of it and um, you know, some people love like all the different aliens and creatures and the, the worlds and stuff. And for me, my in is just the concept of the force and just in, and the idea of light versus dark. And, and, and I I've loved the high Republic's approach to the force, um, which, you know, I hope, I don't think this is really spoiling anything, but like the, the, the novels have really delved deeply into this idea that, there's many different ways to perceive the force. And like, even, even amongst the Jedi, like individual Jedi have different metaphors for how they understand the mystery of the force. And I have just been like, I don't know why, but it was like, um, that, that was such a cool concept to me. And they, they delved into it a little bit in some of the legacy of the force books that I did. Like there, there were different, um, creatures that were almost like in rebels, the Bendu, like that were kind of like, you know, um, didn't necessarily subscribe to the idea of pure light and dark, but that there was more of this, you know, kind of middle um, thing. But um, but the, but the, the High Republic has really um, gone into great detail about that, and I just I really really love it. And I, and it's it's also cool because um, it's it's like the Jedi at their peak. It's like the Jedi in their purest form, and and kind of what ideally a Jedi should be. And so for me to be a part of that was super exciting because like, you know, those are the stories I crave and those are the stories I love. So the fact that I get to be a part of telling those stories or, or kind of presenting those stories uh, has been a huge honor. And I, I've, uh, I, I just love it. And I, I feel incredibly blessed and lucky that I get to be a part of it. Uh, when the, when the books first started, like I wasn't, I wasn't quite sure, you know, it's like, okay. And a new era, and the, but the undertaking is like you've got three phases, and it's essentially like the the trilogy right. movies, right? You've got you've got your your first phase, uh, you follow these characters, and then second phase you go back to the past, and uh-huh. then third phase you you come back to these characters. So it's well, it, it, of it, like that. it feels it feels very <laughs> Star Wars to me. Yeah, that whole structure. Yeah, that's really interesting. <laughs> and being able to follow these characters and like not have it's, you know it's not about Sith, it's about other right. kinds of other kinds of villains, other kinds of issues. Uh, but then the thing that really hooked me is getting to dive into more of what it means to be a Jedi. Yes. Cause, cause we see a lot of like with the prequels and everything else, like where, where there's issues with the Jedi, but this is, what does it actually mean to be a Jedi? And that to me is like super intriguing about um, the, the pinnacle of the Jedi and, and being able to have yeah. that aspect. Yeah. And there's, there's been some really great Jedi that, you know, characters that have come out of it that really embody that in, in some really interesting ways. And, and even um, th- there's some things in the book, the books that they come up with called like way seekers. And like, the, it's almost like this idea of like, they're not bound by the council, but they're like just trying to listen to like, well, what does the force want me to do? And like, they're, 
the fact that they're like really trying to tune in to like what does it mean, you know, to bring balance to the force and to serve the light and you know. So yeah, I'm I'm with you 100. percent I love all this. <laughs> I love getting to see and like experience the force more deeply in those stories. Um, having taken such a deep dive into Star Wars and the philosophy. Um, Mark, what kind of life lessons have you taken with you from doing from that journey? Oh yeah, wow, that's a great question. Especially in the higher public books, like there was not spoil stuff, but there there was a <laughs> there was a Jedi that made a questionable decision, and to see him being tempted by the dark side and kind of wrestling to whether or not to talk to talk about it with someone or get help was a really uh, kind of meaningful thing for me. Cause I, you know, it, it was like, I think sometimes people, when they make a mistake, they want to maybe cover that mistake up and, 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 and not deal with it and, 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 you know, kind of bury it. But a lot of times you bury that stuff and then it comes back later, <laughs> you know, and uh, showing someone be brave enough to admit that they had made a mistake and then get help and then work through it was like, pretty awesome and something I feel like I hadn't really seen in fiction before, really, <laughs> you know, like usually you see someone fall and, you know, yes, they come back, but it's almost like, you know, uh, they have to get exposed or they have to, you know, um, and this was like, you know, someone, Hey, I need help or, you know, and, and, and asking for help and then learning how to work through some stuff. And, uh, so I thought that was really cool. And like a reminder to, to me, it's like, okay, let me, it's okay, you know, I, I need to be willing to admit when I fall short and, and get help with it and not try to like pretend like everything's fine and cover it up or or justify it. And then that ends up leading me further down the dark side, you know, so um, so I really liked that. And that's that's mostly what you see with like the or original trilogy and especially the prequels is people making mistake after mistake and not talking about it. Like you watching this thing, yes. like if, if somebody just really communicated... This wouldn't yeah. have happened. No, totally. <laughs> and it could be it so, so frustrating. People watching the last season of Clone Wars because it was like a conversation was about to happen. It's like, no, 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 just say it. Just, like, just talk. <laughs> <You know>? Just <laughs> snips just and Sky talk, Guy, come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so often the case in fiction. And in real life. And that's that's what I appreciate with uh with the High Republic is because it's the the Jedi. Uh, golden area, the same character that, that you're that you're talking now about. Again, um, not giving anything away is that on, in a more recent book um, had a conversation with the, with a Jedi Master, and and it and it revealed so much and about about what what all this is and the Jedi approach to things that I learned a lot from this conversation and and what it truly yeah. means. Are you are you referring to attachment? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I. Um... Yeah, I'm very curious to see how that's all going to play out. <laughs> because, um, yeah, but but same same here, and I and I think there's some interesting lessons there about when we can kind of get dogmatic about things, and uh, and uh, yeah, so it, it was extremely well written and very kind of provocative and made really made me think about some things. Um, yeah, so it's I'm I'm very very curious to see how that plays out and, you know, and, and how do we get from, you know, that type of perspective that those characters seem to be having to the prequels and like where, where it seems like the, most of the Jedi are, are viewing the idea of attachment with, when it comes to Anakin and, and you know, Anakin. And so, so it's like, uh, I feel like something's going to happen, <laughs> but I don't, I don't know. I haven't read ahead, but you know, but um, <laughs> I, I know it's, it's, it's Star Wars. Something has to happen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's really, really interesting and really, really, really great stuff. Like I'm, I'm loving it. So, so as as somebody who's uh, you know talking about Star Wars all the time and just uh, online and just loving to to dig in not just to the story itself but also lore and um, and things like attachment or things like how the Force works, um, the books go so much further than than the movies can. Um, right. and, uh, what is your favorite, like lore aspect that, that has been, uh, explored more in the books? Um, I mean, I hate to 
go back to this again, but I, I, I do think what we were just talking about is, is really interesting because it always did bother me. Well, maybe bother me is too strong of a word, but like it, I, I've always wrestled with where is the line between love and unhealthy attachment? Because you, you would think that like, like obviously Luke loves his friends and you know, is, is, you know, and, and he, he maybe fell into Vader's trap because of, no, I have to go help them now, you know, but like, but was that a wrong instinct or was that a wrong impulse or, you know, and, and, and obviously you could argue that, you know, his love for his father helped redeem him. And then, you know, all, all, all the stuff that came from that. So, you know, so I, I, I think there's, you know, I think that's a really interesting question. Um, but overall, just, you know, to me, the, the struggle between light and dark and the, the way that the books have been able to go much, much deeper um, into, you know, how, how people navigate that struggle or, or kind of seeing the smaller steps that lead up to how someone could turn, you know, because it's, you know, sometimes in the movie, it can feel a little bit rushed and like, you know, like, really, like, all of a sudden he's like, I hate you and I want to kill you. And it's like, that's your best friend. Like, what do you, you know, but like the, the books can like really show someone's kind of slow, gradual, you know, the little justifications or, or the kind of small decisions that maybe culminate in that. Um, and I, I know I'm rambling a little bit, I'm sorry, but uh, the, I love the, some of the metaphors specifically, again, in the High Republic, like the way they describe the force is like, like Avar perceives the force as like, as like music and like a song. And so like the way that she perceives it as like different, different um, kind of notes or different melodies when they work together, it forms this harmony. And then that, you know, like that's a cool way to, to view the force or like, um, you know, uh, you know, Elzar thinks of it as the ocean, you know, and there's this great scene in one of the books where, if you try to fight the ocean, you're going to get wiped out every time. But if, if you learn to, to ride the wave and go with it, like that's such a cool example of like trusting in the force or kind of like a lot, like it's, you know, um, and, and kind of, you know, how to think of things in, in that way. It's just, a, I, I found that very deep and it, it, exciting because it like, you know, helps you because the force is mysterious. It's like, you know, like we, it, it's hard, it's hard to put it into words. It's hard to articulate. So the, some of those descriptions and some of those illustrations, I feel like are really unlocking things on my mind about, you know, that's how the force works, you know? <laughs> so it's like really cool. I love deep diving into the force and force mysticism and seeing like, I love the ocean and the melody, like, uh, without giving anything away, how do the books explain love? Recently, I really, I'm going to probably butcher it. So you should actually read or listen to the book to, to get the better explanation. But I, uh, in, I think in Temptation of the Force, Tessa, like, talks about how, you know, love is like, in some ways, the ultimate expression of the force and that it, you know, anything that kind of serves the light or kind of, you know, brings about you know, goodness and, and kind of, you know, the, the good qualities like that is, you know, what, it, you know, a, a positive expression of love. And I, and I think, um, you know, it's almost like there's a, um, I'm going to get spiritual on you. Please <laughs> like do. There's like, you know, like, uh, you know, um, there's like agape love, which is like an unconditional love. This is not in Star Wars, but, and, and then there's like, you know, uh, kind of friendship love and there's romantic love and, you know, but like, I, I think the, the way the books might describe it is like the type of love that is unconditional, that it's not self-seeking, it's not selfish, is, is the, the type of love that serves the light. But there's a type of love that's like, you know, um, when it crosses the line into becoming selfish and wanting to hold on to it. Oh, and, and like that unhealthy attachment where, um, I, you know, I want you all to myself or I don't, I don't want anything. I don't want to lose this. So I'm going to hold on to it so tightly and I'm going to maybe, uh, be overprotective of you, or I'm going to, um, 
you know, think of just you over any other need ever because you, this is just so important to me. It becomes, it crosses this line where it starts to become selfish and it's not about, you know, um, that kind of unconditional, you know, serving everyone. It's just about, you know, holding on to what this means to me and, and how this makes me feel. And, um, which is, you know, there's a lot of really important real world lessons there too, you know? <laughs> so, um, but, but I, I think, you know, obviously the books do it much more articulately than I'm trying to do it right now. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think that's what I would say. And I, and I definitely recommend the books as well. Read the books <laughs> for you out there. Uh, or listen, listen, oh, to listen, the listen, is yeah. reading. I, to me, it's the same thing. I, I, uh, yeah. I know you might disagree out there, but to me, if I listen, I'm, I'm still, uh, it counts as reading. Joining in on that story, yeah. You're ingesting one of the, the tale. most, <laughs> one of the most uh, contentious and misunderstood topics when it comes to the Jedi and the Force is balance of the Force. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So, based on your your experience and and what you've read and how you know, um, how would you to to someone out there? How would you explain balance of the Force? I recently saw. And I think it might have been, I don't know if you got this out of him or if this was just at a panel that I saw, but like Ahmed Best recently had this like awesome explanation of balance in the force. Um, and he talked about like, you know, almost like the idea of hot and cold and like, it's not that one is good and one is bad. It's like that, you know, that they have different uses at different times, you know, like if, you know, um, it's like your refrigerator and your stove, you know? And, and so like, there's, there's aspects that, um, that they need to kind of be commingled, but it's, it's more about like the dark side will always kind of consume and, and throw things out of balance. And the light side is what keep things in balance. So it's not that there needs to be, you know, um, the bad guys need to exist. It's like the bad guys inevitably come and the forces of good have to like rise up to kind of put things back in balance because the bad side always tips the scales that what like the greed and selfishness and all those qualities will always, you know, kind of um, take over and dominate things. So the light has to rise up in order to maintain the balance and that each one of us has that kind of, you know, hot and cold within us or, or the, those, those qualities, but it's like, it, it's, a, it's about keeping those things in balance in us as well. And like those, those maybe selfish, greedy impulses with us, if they're, if they're left on check, they take over. So like, we need, we need the light side. We need to, you know, kind of sacrifice and selflessness to kind of put things back in check because those things, that side tends to take over and tip the scales. Oh, what's great is the, the the event that that comes from the the con that that comes from. Lacey's wearing the shirt. We were both at that con. Oh, Lacey's, okay. Lacey's yeah, yeah, yeah. wearing the okay. shirt. I was where, there. Where that was from. Yeah, I, I need to rewatch Year that because I totally what he said, but it was. I remember thinking, "Wow, that's a great description." So watch that clip. Find find that from Rebel Scum Con. Yeah, and and for me, like you know, George Lucas having created the Force and the balance of the Force, to always trying to go back to what what that meaning is and getting to hear somebody who was talking directly to George when it comes to that and, yeah. and getting getting that explanation is is always is always great for me. <laughs> Finally with uh with the uh, the force aspects, um the dark side. Um because you know like what what we were talking about there's there's just dark existing. And then yeah. the dark side, how would you um based on you know again your experience, how would you kind of explain the dark side? Yeah, I, I, my understanding is that the dark side is um, selfishness, it's greed, it's um, the, the, the seeking of power and, and wanting to control circumstances through, through power um, and, and, and kind of, uh, and, you know, just, just kind of those, those impulses and, and, you know, and what Yoda says is like, you know, it's, it's a lot of times it's driven by fear. It's like, you're, you're afraid of, of, of losing control. You're afraid of something bad happening. Uh, you're afraid of getting hurt. So then you kind of, 
kind of almost like preemptively, you know, try to prevent that from happening by trying to control everything and trying to kind of hold on to as much as you can and acquire as much as you can so that you'll be safe and nothing bad will ever happen. And, you know, um, yeah. And it's, 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 it's kind of selfishness and fear driven is, is my understanding. of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree a hundred percent. Um, you know, one of the, one of the things about starting this podcast and, and getting out there is like being able to like geek out and deep dive into topics like this. It's, it's one of my favorite things to do as a nerd is just to, it's just to talk to the people who are in the thing and, yeah. and just, <laughs> just get to geek out. Like to, to me, that's, this is, that that's, that's, he that's heaven for me or, the force. It's the last side yeah. of the force for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we have uh, a list of uh, seeing what some of your favorites are. I know we talked about like your favorite, your favorite voice, um, but, but getting to, getting to know Mark based on the things that you love in Star Wars. Ooh. Mark, do you have a favorite Star Wars film? Oh yeah. Uh, Empire Strikes Back. Is there is there something about is there something about Empire that uh, makes it your favorite? Yeah, I mean it's um, it's pretty much it's pretty much Yoda. Like I just I love the idea of um, you know I love I love the idea of Yoda uh, that you can't judge something uh, by the way it looks um, and that you know it's it's about the force, not about the individual. Like it's, it's not about how big and strong and, you know, tough this guy was. He was this little, small, you know, uh, quirky guy, but you know, um, it was about the, it, his strength came from the force. And so that's something that like, I feel like planted a lot of seeds in me and just, uh, is a, is a really big deal to me. And just, I love, um, I love, there's so much I love about that movie. Like I love the scene of, you know, in the asteroid field and, and, you know, that piece of music is like, I'll sometimes play that in my car when it's raining and turn on the high, you know, the high beams. It's like, yeah. So, and I'll, so, but yeah, it's, it's mainly Yoda. Like uh, Yoda means a lot to me. He's my favorite and, and empire introduced him and, and, uh, yeah, I just I, I think that was kind of the first one of the first. I mean, obviously Obi Wan did a great job explaining the Force and New Hope, and and that was pretty awesome. But like going deeper into the Force with with the whole training montage on Dagobah is just I I think of that all the time. So <laughs> <laughs> me too. You're not alone in that. Okay, good. I feel like <laughs> no, no. Empire is Empire is my favorite too. Uh, you know, gr growing up with that and like yeah, that's. That to me is, I, I think growing up, um, when I, when I was a little kid, it might've been Return of the Jedi just cause uh -huh. you know, I was, I was right at that age, but as I got a little bit older, it's definitely empire for me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right there with you. Uh, this one might be, uh, harder, but we'll see, uh, based on the, the history of star Wars animated or live action, do you have a favorite show? Oh man. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that one's harder. It's a really close tie between Star Wars Rebels, Mandalorian, and Ahsoka. When I watch Rebels and I see Kanan's sacrifice, I cry every time. I've watched that episode maybe five or six times, and I still tear up every single time. Like, I, I just think that that was, like, so beautifully done, so unexpected, just so, like, moving. Um, Mandalorian, I've just loved so much and i and I, I i was kind of expecting like oh i'll watch it it'll be cool um but i, w I was feeling like it was going to be this dark edgy like gritty like you know smuggler bounty hunter and then you know seeing him and grogu and their relationship there was like a lot of father-son stuff that came up for me and i have two boys and like you know like uh my son and i got um matching uh tattoos oh i love it yeah, and we uh, and uh, I wanted to get the clan of two, but he liked the look of that one better, so we got that one. But uh, so um, so I really love that. And then Ahsoka, I just again, there's so many great force lessons and master apprentice stuff between her and Sabine, and um, I and I I love her with Anakin and having to learn the lesson of you're not defined by 
the mistakes you've made. You're not defined by who your master is. And, and it's, you know, and, uh, and, and again, you can't allow your fear of, of something bad happen, control you like, and, you know, and you have to kind of not give into that fear and, and, you know, and, and, and her fear of what happened to her might happen to, or to Anakin might happen with Sabine and, you know, like, and that she had to kind of work through that and, and watching her kind of evolve from kind of stoic to more, I don't know joy, if joyful is the right word, but like, you know, embracing, you know, I don't know. There's just so much in that show and seeing Thrawn in live action was a big deal. Um, and my connection to Thrawn. So there's just, uh, it's, it's hard to choose. I didn't really answer the question. Did I? No, no, it's, it's a great answer. <laughs> if, if you I don't mean, have a favorite, I, you know, that you gave us the yeah, top yeah. three and, that's, <laughs> and why. I can't pick favorites. I think, I think top three and then explanation. That's how I go. I can't just be like one. Yeah. <laughs> Who are some other like standouts that have really stuck with you? Uh, character wise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well definitely, definitely Obi-Wan and just, um, how I love his kind of, you know, devotion and like ha having like kind of the, the tragedy of watching, you know, his best friend fall and then maybe kind of coming back and uh, the fact, like, I, I think, I like Obi Wan for that reason. I also like Ray for that reason because I feel like Ray had so many reasons to be bitter and turn to the dark side. <laughs> like you know, she, you know, lost her parents. She's abandoned on this like awful world, and she's kind of working for this you know horrible person. And like, there's so many reasons why she could have given into you know bitterness and anger and and despair, and yet she's still like somebody who helps people. She's still someone who it has hope. And, uh, and so I think that's really inspiring. Um, I really like Din Djarin. I, I like Mandalorian because, uh, I love his devotion to his creed. And I, I find that really inspiring and in that, you know, like there's, there's this like, um, nobility to that in my mind of like, you know, he, he even when it's hard, I'm going to stick to this creed. And then, and then even some of the questions that show raises about dogma of like, you know, is it more important to hold to my creed or is it more important to, you know, take off my helmet so I can help this person, <laughs> you know, cause like, which the, which is the more noble thing at that point, helping someone or sticking to this rule. And, you know, and so I think that's really deep and interesting. Those are, those are the first ones that come to mind. Um, but I, oh, well, Kane and Jairus again, like I just love him and Ezra and like their, their relationship. And I love watching him. I want like, well, watching both of them kind of mature and almost learn what it means to be a Jedi and learn about getting to that point of ultimate self-sacrifice, like, like watching him evolve to that point and, and being truly surrendered about it. And um, I, I thought that was incredibly inspiring. So I'm working on my Kane and Claude cosplay right now because my, my, I saw, my yeah, partner has they, a Hera and like, it's so good. And I'm like, Oh, I have to, I have to work on my Kane. Yeah. I can't I'm wait so to see it. I'm so excited about it, that. It looks good so far. Uh, the penultimate question. Um, uh, this is, this is open to all the vehicles, but do you have a favorite vehicle, whether it be uh, anything ground ship, but a favorite vehicle? Yeah, I have a, I, I had to change it because I recently moved, but my license plate was M L F L C N. <laughs> so I love it. Um, That's uh, so yeah, good. Said, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm hoping I get to do it again uh, down here. But uh, but yeah. So I I love the Falcon and I and I love, um, yeah, just the the asteroid belt, the, you know, <laughs> with an X wing being a close second because I, I I love Red Five and. Uh, they're both very so iconic. Um, okay, yeah. so the final question that we had for you is what is your favorite Star Wars creature from the entire compendium Ooh, universe? I don't know that I've ever considered that before. Um, I guess probably Tauntauns, I guess. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, um, I'm a fan of a fuzzy yeah, Tauntaun probably. myself. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, like Think Geek used to have a, a Tauntaun sleeping bag where the oh the, yeah, the, yeah. I never got one, but I I, uh, I really wanted to get one of those. <laughs> there were the toys where the the Tauntaun belly would open up, so you can like put put like Luke in there. And then uh, what Lacey was referring to, they have a fuzzy Tauntaun in the a Galaxy's Edge. In, um, oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, in, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the I have that same <laughs> Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think. So hang excited. on. I love yep, that nub. Place. Yeah. That's right. There we go. Oh yeah. Yep, nub. Same one. Yeah, yep, yeah. nub. Yeah, I love it. Thank you so much for coming on and and geeking out with us and uh, letting us kind of pick your brain and and getting to know you. Uh, it's been oh, a yeah. pleasure. <laughs> Thank you for having me. This was super fun. For the social media plug, if uh, if you're online, if people can follow you places. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm kind of complicated. It's Captain Ehud underscore Mark Thompson underscore VO uh, on Instagram. And then I think on X, I'm Captain Ehud. And on Facebook, I'm just Mark Thompson. So I know I should change them and make them consistent, but I have to then like pay for the accounts and be verified. And I'm <laughs> too cheap to do that. We'll, we'll, we'll tag the things so that, so okay. that people can, can find them <laughs> and, and follow you so they don't have to, they don't have to search. Um, yeah. And then if you're watching any of these clips on uh, Instagram, then uh, uh, that, that Mark will be, should be tagged in, in that. I've been wanting to talk to you for, for a while now, and it's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure for me to get, to get to finally be able to geek out with you. Oh, yeah. It's been super fun. And I've, I've been watching your stuff online for a long time too and like every time i see you at galaxy's edge with the white uh jedi columbia <laughs> hat i'm like why didn't i buy that when that came out like i love that hat <laughs> i know i get i get more compliments on that hat more than anything else oh, do you really? yeah, yeah and yeah. and i really i'm wearing it because my bald head and i, I don't uh, want to get burned but you know it makes great <laughs> way to spot me yeah yeah no, I love all your stuff. I, I get, I got lots of tips before I went to Galaxy's Edge from watching your stuff, and then I, I love all your reviews and everything. So. Oh, perfect! Thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And to the rest of you, uh, thank you again uh, for joining us. Uh, don't forget to, you know, like the video, subscribe to whatever you're watching this on. Uh, we appreciate you uh, tuning in. Um, so from me, uh, may the force be with you. And also. <laughs>